Hey everybody, we're going to build a complete game today in Godot. It's going to be called Mayor Mayhem Manager. We're going to take this concept I created right here for the TriJam 347 Game Jam. The theme is questionable choices. So we got a game about you as a mayor making some very questionable choices. So come on, let's see what I did. So here at the start, I focused on building the basic UI. I created some headers, some footers to give me space, and then I built the interactive screen for the crisis events. I also set up the three bars at the bottom to track the game's levels as you go through, the public approval level, the danger level, and the weirdness or the absurdity level. And each time you make a choice, it changes how each one of these values. And then at the end, we determine the outcome based on those values. Next, I built the crisis effect resource. Each one of these stores how each choice affects the three track values. Having that set up, let me reference these effects inside an array in the crisis data resource. Then I created the crisis data resource itself, which contains the crisis name, the description, what each option is, and its paired corresponding crisis effect. I created a couple of example crisis events to populate the system and test how everything flowed. I started building out the core game loop. First, I made an array that contains every crisis that would appear in the game, and then Godot randomly crashed on me. To avoid the crash from my previous loader, I pulled a directory loader from another game I made. With that working, I shuffled the full crisis array and selected the first 10 to use as the active crisis for the game session. Next, I built the script that loads crisis data into the main panel. I create a function to clear all the UI boxes, a loader function to display the current crisis, and then connected the option buttons to my execute function that receives the crisis effect parameter for the selected choice. That execute function emits a signal back to the parent, which then calls an update values function to apply changes to the game state. At this point, I introduced a bug while adding safety checks. All my event effect arrays ended up being equal to the first loaded crisis used because I never reconnected the buttons to the new values. I didn't realize this until much later. I add the function responsible for updating all the on-screen UI elements based on the current game values. And one hour into it, this is where it looked like. We have our three levels at the bottom. We can choose. We can drive up our danger level by choosing this. Unfortunately, we only have two crises right now, so this will crash the system. Boom. I took a quick break. I checked in with the artist, and he gave me back a mock-up for the design. He hadn't provided me with the asset files yet, just the mock-up image. So this is what I was trying to use to match to his layout. As you can see, I shifted the footer onto the right-hand side control node and updated the header to follow the mock-ups layout. I added one more crisis to expand the pool. I implemented the end game conditions and temporarily reduced the required number of crises down to three for testing. I also moved the ending logic out of the main script and into the paper container script so I could reuse the paper scene instead of building a separate end screen. Finding ways to avoid building new stuff is very important in game jams. I added a reset function so players could immediately reset after reaching an ending. I did some additional testing and added more crisis until we got to the final 10 count that the game needs. I'll add more later. So at an hour and a half, this is what the game looked like. Uh, you can see we have our bars moved over here from the sides. We've got our stand in here. Um, we can still, you know, all of our stuff adjust as we use it. Spicy Festival. And then we have our end game. You get voted out. And of course, I just have standby logic in there again, but we can play again. We can do this. And if you notice, you can see this bug I was talking about earlier, where everything is the same value every single time. I received the final art assets from the artist and began to integrate them into the project. I discovered the background file already included the black device shape I had built the UI around, so I had to adjust the layout and remove some of the placeholder elements. This cost some time, but it improved consistency throughout the project. The new asset resolution caused the slopes of the bar graphs to look incorrect. I attempted to fix them briefly, but decided it wasn't worth the time with less than 90 minutes remaining. I worked on aligning the overlay with the bar graph, adjusting the aspect ratio, and matching the in-game text to the art text. 
The artist provided a header graphic, but because it had a crisis number baked into the art, I didn't have time to modify it. Instead, I reused my existing header and matched its color to the artist's palette. I tried to align the drawers and the folders, which were in different resolutions and in certain aspect ratio, and it took much longer than expected. I spent a lot of time repositioning them until they looked visually correct to me. I added a folder script and created tweens for the animation of the folder being pulled out of the drawer. I decided to use tweens instead of the animation player because I figured it'd be a lot easier to change this in code with set hard values than going through and trying to map it out through a graphical interface. I then stored all the folders in an array to easily cycle through them. However, I loaded the array backwards, which caused folder 10 to appear for Crisis 1. I didn't notice this until playtesting when my wife pointed it out. I built the paper interface used for the Crisis choices. I tried to reuse my original interface, but it didn't fit with the new assets, so I stripped it down to just the container and rebuilt it from there. Following the mock-up they sent me, we placed the flavor text for the event in between the text boxes on the Crisis paper. The artist was thinking ahead and sent the Google font they had used in the art to make sure that all the in-game fonts would match. Now I wanted to animate the paper coming in and out of the screen. I decided I was going to use the tween again. I've already written the code for the folders, so I just inversed it and I have the animation now for the paper coming and going off the screen as the players interact with it. The idea of this is there's a random pool of crises that the player has to deal with. If it's the same 10 the entire time, it's not gonna be very interesting. Came up with a pool of about 50 of these before I started building anything. I'm just starting to load stuff. Unfortunately, the jam, we only got to about 20. The final version has a full 50 in there. I tried to create a little bit more elaborate endings and then end up returning back to the shorter, simpler summaries for the jam build. At this point, I had about 10 minutes left, so I finalized everything and moved into quick playtesting and bug fixing. Unfortunately, I didn't capture that last 10 minutes of build time on video. And this is where we are for the game jam submission. We got the moving charts. We have the really bad folder poll audio, um, but we have a full working game. And we can submit all this stuff. We have the charts, uh, the bars working properly. I am quickly flipping through these just to get to the end of the game and show you that we have the completion. And at the end, you get your results and then you can play again and it starts all over. And there you have it. A game built from beginning to end in three hours in Godot. This is the first time I've ever worked with an artist. Normally I just use assets and it's an experience I would definitely do again and I'm looking forward to hopefully working with this artist again on some future projects. But I couldn't just leave it in the state it was. All week I've been poking and prodding at it and I've decided to you know keep going just a little bit further try to match the artist's original visions for how it looks add some extra sound effects and some music and just in general juice and polish to the game. So take a look here it is. We got all of our graphics that match the artist's original vision. We've got our welcome letter from the previous mayor. I'll leave this all so you can come back and read it. We've got our animations. We have now got the check boxes. And we've got some additional audio. The sharp piercing sound of the folder pull has been fixed. We've got a lot of different uh, sounds and randomizations in here to make everything sound good. And then we have a complete fun working game with 50 different crises that you can manage yourself. And hopefully you'll give it a shot on itch.io and enjoy it. <laughs>